Now that we have our small report ready to work with controls, we'll start with the first one, which I consider one of the most important, the date range control. First, let's add it to our report. We'll go to the Add a Control section and select Date Range Control. Then, we'll place it anywhere on the current page. This control has some interesting features. The first is that when you select this control automatically, if no period has been assigned, it will assign a default period. That's why when you interact with it. Look, it defaults to auto date range. This automatic period refers to the last 28 days. Whenever the automatic period is selected, it will use the current date as a reference against the previous 28 days. So always keep that in mind. I'll select a period in two different ways so we can see how this control works effectively. First, I'll select the period from October 1st to 31, and let's see what happens. Notice that when I select my period, the information in all the charts in the report starts to be manipulated. To understand the curiosity I'm talking about, I'll pause here on our evolution chart, and I want us to keep something in mind, and you'll understand the importance of having added it. First of all, we have two lines displayed on the chart. The first refers to the data obtained for the current date, and the second shows the data compared to the previous period. Look, if I pause at October 1st, 2024, it is comparing it to August 31st, 2024. However, the comparison should be with September 1st, because I'm comparing my current month against the previous month. But I want you to understand that Looker Studio operates this way. When I manually selected from October 1st to 31, I'm telling it to select a range of 31 days, and what it will do is compare that with the 31 days immediately prior, which corresponds to August 31st to September 30th, and that's why this information is generated this way. Now, how can I solve this? When I want to compare my month against the last month, I don't want to compare by the number of days, but by the closed month. Notice that this control has predefined periods. For what purpose? To avoid discrepancies in the data we are seeing. So first, let's notice something. Look at what the scorecard says when I manually selected the period. That views are down 17% compared to the immediately previous period. However, now let's see what happens when I select the predefined periods that Looker Studio offers. Now, I will select last month using the predefined ranges. It seems to indicate that it's the same period I'd selected manually. But let's see how it's different when I click Apply. Notice how the way the views are displayed has changed. Now it shows that it was only a 14% increase compared to last month. Now let's look at our evolution chart and position ourselves on October 1st, 2024. As you can see, it's now correctly comparing October 1st with September 1st. This is something you must be very clear about when making comparisons or when selecting periods. Let me show you something else. When you enter a report, for example, I'll refresh this page and let's see what happens. The period I had previously selected is lost and reverts to the default automatic period. How can we avoid this? For example, if you're working on a monthly report and want this period to stay while you're developing a report, so it doesn't get lost every time you enter or refresh the page, what we need to do is select the date range control. And here in the settings, we'll configure it directly. So we'll take the same configuration we had earlier which was for last month. We'll apply it, and it should maintain the configuration we assign. Now I'll refresh, and let's see what happens. Notice that our configuration is still maintained. Now you understand how this date range control works. I encourage you to do several exercises to see how this control works, as it is very important to keep it in mind within Looker Studio.